Hey everyone, a new version of OpenRC2 has released, and it's version 0.4.12. In this video, I will take you through some of the most exciting and interesting changes that have been done in this version of the game. Alright, here you can see the change log for version 0.4.12, and the developers call it the Ministry of Silly Walks. Which is of course a Monty Python reference, the developers uh, Certainly love those. Anyway, um, yeah, you can see that there's a lot of uh, uh, changes and fixes uh, in this version of the game. Uh, normally, the developers like to have a new release every month, but now it took a little bit longer because there were uh, more things they still wanted to fix. So this release took two months, so that's why it's also such uh, a large list. Anyway, in this video, I will take you through the most exciting and uh, interesting changes I will not do all of them, you can read the entire change log uh, at the link that I will leave in the video description. Alright, the first change is a change in the user interface. So if you go to options and then to the cogwheel icon, then here you can find a button that says align toolbar buttons horizontally centered. And then you can see all the buttons on the top of the screen uh, are now in the center. It's an option, you can uh, select it or not select it, uh, it's whatever you prefer. Alright, uh, in the same menu we now also find this uh, checkbox for enlarged UI and if we enable it, um, we can you can now see that in options for example or all these drop downs, there's now more space between all these items, uh, yeah, which is uh, useful if you, uh, if you try to use uh, this game on a tablet for example with touch controls and now um, these um, yeah, options are uh, easier to, uh, to tap. You can, for example, also see it in a menu like this. For example, where you select the colors, uh, there's now some more space between the colors. Now, there's also this box here that says Touch Enhancements. Basically, what that does is that when you click the uh, menu, it will now stay open, which is uh, also um, yeah, easier to, uh, to control uh, when you use a tablet, for example, with, uh, with, without a mouse. So we can see if we uh, disable this again, now I have to uh, hold the the button here with my mouse in order to keep the drop down open. Okay, here's another change that was made. Now, um, if you want to uh, expand the map, let's uh, quickly enable sandbox mode. Of course, you can also do this in the scenario editor. Uh, if, you, if you've made a map, you want to expand it, well, you can make the map bigger, but you can see it will only increase in two directions and will not increase in these two directions. And uh, yeah, this has, uh, has uh, already caused problems in quite a few uh, uh, instances. Um, but now there's actually the option to also increase the map size uh, in uh, these two directions. Now, uh, for as of now, it can only uh, still be done with plugins, but it is at least possible. So here I have a plugin that allows you to increase the map with eight by eight tiles in th these two directions. So let's quickly um, enable the plugin, shift map. And now you can see the uh, map has been increased by eight tiles in these two directions. And the whole rest of the map has uh, shifted over by eight tiles. And all entities like guests, etc. have all moved along with it. Uh, it looks like I do still need to move the uh, spawn point here, so guys can actually uh, walk to the edge of the map. But other than that, uh, it has worked perfectly. So uh, I think we'll just have to wait for a nice plugin with a good uh, interface, uh, so we can uh, use this functionality in a nice way. Okay, here's another new feature. When you open the game, you can see this uh, loading bar. Uh, for me, it was now pretty short, but... Uh, depending on how powerful your computer is and how many custom objects you have, uh, it may show for longer. Uh, so yeah, uh, when you start up the game, uh, you may see this uh, little progress bar uh, coming up. There are several different cursor types that it can show, and it should also show up uh, if you're trying to join a server. Let's see if there's a server available for us to join. I'll just try uh, this one at the top. You can see this uh, little coaster pops up here showing the progress of uh, our downloading of the map in this uh, in this case. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a really fun way of showing uh, the progress of stuff instead of uh, just letting the user guess what's uh, what's happening. 
Okay, another change that was made. Well, actually, it's many changes. Uh, a lot more uh, stuff has been added to the plugin API. So people who are creating plugins, uh, um, yeah, have control over more and more things in the game. Also, a lot of changes have have been made to um, what is exposed uh, to the plugins by uh, about guests and staff members. So uh, yeah, you'll probably see some plugins uh, pop up very soon, which give you a lot of control over guest and staff animations. Okay, uh, a fun thing you can do in OpenRC2 is to give all the windows in the screen uh, in the game different colors. So you can do this under options, under the cogwheel icon, and here you can edit your themes. So over here you can see all the windows and then uh, you can change the colors of those. For example, here I have the park info window now gold colored with a gray background. Um, something that uh, has is now new is that you can also select the newer colors that were added to the game um, some time ago. Um, yeah, those colors could not be chosen yet, but now that is possible. So now here you can see this uh, part. Uh, here is uh, the sepia color. Now, uh, something which is also new is that now you can make all these parts uh, translucent if you want. So now you can see, I can uh, see through this uh, screen here, and I can see the coaster that's uh, that's behind it. Now here you can see an alpine coaster. Now, um, something that wasn't actually possible before for the alpine coaster was to select an alternate color scheme. Uh, a flag for that wasn't set in the code, but now it's available. So you can now um, color a part of the alpine coaster track in a different color if you want. Okay, for the next one, I will use the enlarged UI, which I uh, showed earlier. And something which has been changed is, uh, well, for example, we have a drop down here and now it actually fits in the screen. But if we change the scaling a bit, uh, now you can see the drop down would be too large to fit in the screen. And now when it, that happens, uh, the game will automatically make multiple columns to fit all the information in the screen. Okay, um, something else which was changed is that the um, map screen has uh, had some improvements and the rendering speed of the map has been improved quite a bit. So uh, the game will no longer also try to uh, draw uh, unused portions of the map. And it will also make sure that uh, the park you see here in the screen is in the middle. And it will try to fit as much of the map as possible uh, in the screen. So sometimes... Uh, you, yeah, the game by default would only show part of the map or the map would be in the complete uh, wrong uh, part of the screen. So now it's all nice and centered. Okay, something else which was changed is that when you make a screenshot using the menu item over here or when you press Ctrl and S, uh, you will now see the message that the screenshot has been made and saved to a location. Uh, this uh, screenshot message was actually removed because uh, if you made a screenshot and then made another one, uh, yeah, it, it, this message would actually appear in the second screenshot. But now uh, um, the message disappears right before the second screenshot is taken. So uh, yeah, the removal of the message is no longer necessary and you will always see it in screen when you make a screenshot, which is a nice confirmation that your screenshot has actually been taken. Now, uh, something else which you can do from the options menu is to set the window scale factor. So you can use these buttons for that. And uh, previously, when you did that, the options window would fly all over the place. Uh, but now, uh, when you press this button, the options uh, window will stay in the center of your screen. All right, the next point is another nice quality of life change. So. Um, yeah, in many windows in OpenRC2, uh, if there's a value you can change, uh, with, uh, there will often be a plus and a minus button next to it. Um, usually you can also change those values uh, with the scroll wheel. Now, um, this functionality has also been added to plugins. So, uh, yeah, if we have this train here now, vehicle one, and I want to change the max speed, previously I would have to press the plus uh, a lot of times, but now I can just scroll up with my mouse wheel. Okay, here's another more subtle change that has been done to the game. Uh, if I now go to the options or to this menu and I go to load game, you can see that the uh, um, game in the background now is paused. And it will stay paused as long as this uh, window is open. 
And same goes for the save menu. You can now see the game also stays paused while the save game window is open. Okay, something else which was changed is that uh, normally when you right click a uh, track piece, uh, the game wants you to interact with it. So you go to the menu uh, where you can uh, uh, build or delete uh, the object or continue building. But um, if you now make uh, objects see-through, for example, through the menu, we can make uh, rides see-through or vehicles or any or paths. And when we do that, uh, when I right click here, you now no longer select the track piece. So see-through objects are now just ignored as if they've been made completely invisible. Now for the next change, uh, OpenRC2 allows you to place uh, invisible cues. It's one of the OpenRC2 uh, official objects. Uh, previously, it just showed an empty image like this, uh, but now um, it has actually been changed. So it uh, shows you uh, some guests which I think is a nice change to uh, distinguish between the normal invisible path and the invisible queue. Okay, next up, uh, a change has been made to some of the weather. Now, currently it's sunny in Mount Ducklink, but through the cheat menu, uh, we can make it um, snow. Now, in a normal snow, it's uh, still, uh, the guest behavior is still the same. It doesn't change anything. But if we change it to heavy snow, uh, guests should start taking out their umbrellas and it will treat it like it's raining. And the same happens uh, in a blizzard, which is just uh, heavy snow with thunder. Okay, we're now back in the main menu. And if you go to select a scenario, you can now see a change in the Wacky Worlds and Time Twister um, scenarios. So now just like the normal scenarios, uh, the names of these scenarios have gotten the same names as the park names. So you will see, uh, you might see some different uh, scenario names than you may have been used to seeing. There's also mixed opinions uh, on this change, but it does make everything more consistent. Now, another change that has been made is that the time twister scenarios, uh, just like the wacky world scenarios, have been reordered um, to more fit the yeah how difficult they are. So some scenarios may have been moved to other categories and they have been reordered uh, from easy to more difficult. Okay, another UI change has been made. So previously, if you wanted to select a patrol area for a handyman, for example, um, yeah, you would not actually be able to see uh, the selection that, uh, of your mouse uh, if an area was already selected uh, for a patrol area uh, by another handyman. But now you can see that the UI where my mouse is is just a little bit lighter, so you can actually see the area that you are currently selecting. Something else was changed in the construction window. Uh, something which was done in a previous update was that uh, you can could hold uh, the delete button to delete more sections of track in one go. The same goes for the build button. Um, but you couldn't move through the track yet with these arrow buttons uh, by holding it. You still had to click many times, but that has now been changed. So if I hold this forward button, you can see we move through the track uh, multiple sections at a time. And same goes for reverse. So I no longer have to click it many times to uh, move through the track pieces. Some plugins can actually change the price of rides for you. Uh, to make, for example, to make them as optimal as possible. But there was actually no uh, bound on the price that the plugin could set. So uh, they could even set your, uh, yeah, your ride prices to a negative amount. And there were no bounds for that. Uh, but that has also been changed in the last release version. Here's another little change. Um, for example, if we tried previously tried to place a bench on a path where that was not possible, for example, over here, previously it would just say cannot position this here, but now um, the message has been made more clear and it says it can only be placed on path edges. Now here's a little change that was done in how servers are started. Uh, previously, uh, if you uh, started the game uh, in a server, and then all the cheats that were set in that save game uh, would be uh, uh, reset again, which uh, can be quite annoying when you're starting a server and you just want to continue with the cheats that were already set. But that has been fixed in this release version. 
So if you have a save game in which several cheats are set, and you now start a server with that particular save game, all the cheats that were previously set will still be uh, enabled. Now another small fix has been made in the hover car vehicles. Uh, previously in the text it said that the capacity for these vehicles was two passengers per car, but they can in fact only fit one passenger. So the text has been uh, fixed. And the same goes for the school bus vehicles. I believe it's one of the tram vehicles from uh, the expansions. In the text it said they could hold 10 passengers per car, but that has been uh, changed to six. Okay, and finally, uh, for many large objects from the expansions, uh, the wall boundaries were actually a really weird, as you can see in some of these objects. But um, for most of them, that should have now been fixed. All right, those were the most interesting and exciting changes for OpenRC2 version 0.4.12. Uh, you can read the full changelog in the link that I will leave in the video description. Now, um, if you thought this video was uh, was interesting or fun, um, yeah, just uh, uh, leave a like on this video. It would really help out my channel. And let me know in the comments what you think of these changes. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in the next video. See you later.